Okay. Okay, good evening and welcome to the webinar Metrology for a Digital, Sustainable and Clean Industry, organized by the Centro Español de Metrología in the frame of the European Union Industry Week. My name is David Martin and I will be your host this evening. This event will last around three hours and will be organized as follows. There will be eight presentations delivered by well-known specialists. We have instructed the speakers that their presentation should last a maximum of 20 minutes each. Let's hope they will respect it. Once all presentations have been delivered, we have reserved enough time for questions and answers. If you have any questions, please send it to webinar at sem.es. If possible, please indicate the speaker you want to address your question to. You may submit your questions in French, Spanish, English or Portuguese at your will. They will be translated if needed into English. One of my colleagues, Peña, will be managing the email, reading your questions and selecting the most representative ones to be asked to our speakers. As I stressed before, questions will be answered after all presentations are over. We are pleased that at this moment we have more than 60 attendants and more than 600 people registered. Finally, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Raul Blanco, President of SEM and General Secretary for Industry and Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises at the Spanish Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism. He will talk about measures adopted for the reactivation of the industry, short and medium-term perspective. President Blanco, you have the floor. Thank you. So, thank you very much. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be with you uh, hosting this uh, this uh, this webinar in the framework of the industry of the European industry industry week and uh, and uh, and talking about metrology uh, and, the pay, uh, and the role of the metrology in the recovering in uh, in Europe so thank you very much to all the, my colleagues to all the the panel Thank you very much to the to the team in the Spanish Center of Metrology, and, uh, and thank you also, obviously, to all the to all the followers uh, right now at the at the seminar. I will be very brief, as uh, as the as the, the, the presenter, the conductor has said. Uh, I, I will talk uh, around 15 minutes in order to introduce. Uh, the, 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 the main policies that we are developing uh, in Spain right now in the framework of the uh, recovery plan and how these uh, policies are uh, connected with, uh, with metrology. So, uh, so let's begin. I'm going to try to uh, share my to share my screen. I hope I will do it OK. And now, so let's see right now. Okay, I think the the, the <laughs> okay. So, uh, which is the framework? Uh, well, the the, the 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 hard situation we are living in the in the pandemic and the hard situation as a consequence of uh, of uh, of the pandemic in terms of uh, of economical crisis uh, obvious, uh, all the all the countries um, in Europe are trying to uh, succeed trying to 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 overlap uh, this situation with uh, different policies but the difference uh, the main difference with uh, with the previous crisis with the crisis in 20 in in 2008 is that we have a very different European uh, framework in the, in the historical agreement of the July 21st in, uh, in 2020 the, uh, the, the, the government the, the, the prime ministers and the head of governments they agreed to uh, to to increase the the, the, the the budget framework for the multi-annual uh, budget uh, framework for for the European Union in in an additional uh, amount of uh, 750 
thousand million euros. This is what we call next generation EU. And inside this ne next generation EU, inside this uh, 750,000 million euros, the main mechanism is the recovery and uh, resilience mechanism that uh, more or less accounts for has uh, accounts for three uh, three hundred thousand uh, uh, three hundred thousand million millions million euros in terms of well, no, it, it's easier in english terms because we can talk about uh, 300 billion uh, and and from this part the, in the next three years spain will receive transfers for uh, for an, uh, an amount of, of investment of uh, 60 uh, billion euros. So this is an exceptional amount. This is a, a not, not uh, a quantity not seen uh, in a previous situation. But in, in comparison, Spain has received uh, uh, during uh, the period uh, 1985 till uh, till 2010 around 80 billion euros in net transfers from the European Union. Uh, now we are talking about receiving 60 billion euros in for the next three years. So this is a unique opportunity. Uh, there will be no other opportunity like this to change our industry, to change our SMEs, to boost uh, the, the the recovery and trying to do uh, complex and strategic projects, as uh, I, I will talk uh, in in some minutes. The structure so with these 60 billion uh, euros, Spain has designed their recovery, transformation, and resilience plan for 2021 to 20. 23 the the plan was presented by by the prime minister uh, october uh, in uh, on october uh, the, the the seventh uh, last year and the and the plan is a structure in 14 uh, main uh, 14 national targets four main axes 30 uh, 10, sorry, 10 uh, leverage uh, policies or 10 big chapters of policies. And finally, 30 components or 30, 30 chapters of, uh, of investments and reforms. Today, I will talk about the, 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 the component of uh, number 12 uh, of these 30 components, that is the industrial policy for Spain 2030, so the component of, uh, of industry. In this case, very, very briefly, let's see, uh, no, right now, the targets, very clear, modernization, productivity, and boosting GDP contribution of, uh, of industry, so increase the weight of industry in our economy. The, the, the four main uh, chapters on, or axes inside this component, digitalization of strategic economic sectors, green and digital transformation. So what it's called in, uh, by the commission, uh, what it's called the, the, the twin transition, uh, fostering high uh, value added industries, especially uh, with uh, strategic projects uh, similar we want to reproduce the IPCI, the, the, the interest common projects at the European level, reproduce this, uh, this structure in the, at the Spanish level. So trying to promote big projects between whole, uh, between complete integral value chains, industrial value chains, and finally, circular economy uh, strategy. Key challenges that we have, uh, the first, taking advance of the positive uh, the, the spillovers uh, of, uh, of, of industry. So uh, especially industry in, uh, in our economy 
is the, the, the main powerhouse for R&D, is the main powerhouse for labor stability, for labor training, uh, and is uh, the main guarantee for uh, territorial cohesion and social cohesion because, uh, because industry guarantees uh, all these, uh, these aspects. Boosting productivity, promoting a more targeted uh, specialization, talking about uh, value-added supply chains, enabling SMEs to participate in these value chains, in these ecosystems, data-driven focus for digital transformation, fostering the role of industry in decarbonization, in, in, in emissions reduction, and uh, finally, speeding up innovation processes uh, for uh, real circular economy. All the all this chapter, all this component of uh, of activities, of policies, uh, is uh, is being uh, we we have different guidelines. The first one uh, is the European strategic approach taking into account the, the, the new industrial strategy for Europe that was approved uh, last uh, on March uh, 2020, but right now it's being updated after the, after the pandemics. A national strategic approach, guidelines for new industrial policy 2030, reindustrialization of the economy, transformation of industrial structure, an adaptation to the twin transformation. So we have the difference. Uh, we, we, we have this national strategy and also in terms of circular economy, circular Spain to 2030, Spanish circular economy strategy. Reducing waste generation and boosting a new production and consumption model and uh, new models of waste uh, management. Also, in the national strategic approach, another uh, another strategies to take into account are Digital Spain 2025 agenda, speeding up, which uh, speed up the uh, digitization of productive uh, structure processes, promotion of intensive implementation of data use, boosting uh, digital skills, also here reskilling and upskilling. A national plan for energy and climate, the roadmap for economy de decarbonization and boosting energy efficiency. So, after talking about the the, the general uh, uh, the general uh, background uh, about the, the agreement reached last year by the, by, by the member states, first the plan. Uh, designed and, and implemented by Spain uh, with this, in the framework of these next generation EU funds. The strategic approach that we have uh, used that, uh, in European strategic approach, national strategic approach. Now, I, have, I will talk uh, very brief about uh, the uh, the, the, the elements of this uh, of this component 12 of these poly industrial policies inside the recover the Spanish recovery plan all the components are uh, are formed are composed uh, by reforms structural reforms and what the commission call investments or or, or, or main uh, main lines main activity lines reforms what we want at the first point, First reform, a strategy to boost industry 2030. Here, what we want to, to reach is a national agreement, national consensus on industry with social agents like uh, unions and business associations and also political parties. We want a consensus around industry, around industrial policy in order to, uh, to, to, to elaborate a new uh, a new industrial a low, uh, a new law for industry in Spain. The last law of industry in Spain, the, 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 which is actually in power, came from uh, 
1992. So it's long ago, almost 30 years. Uh, and, uh, and at that moment, even this uh, video call that we are doing here with Webex, etc., was impossible. So, so the world has changed, the industry has changed, and with this consensus, we want to change the Spanish law in order to have an updated law, a more powerful legal framework in order to boost industry in Spain. Secondly, legal framework for new legal framework for energy intensive industries. Uh, this has been approved on, on December and uh, approved by the national, uh, approved by the Spanish government and approved by the European Commission in order to give uh, different uh, different different tools, different instruments to reduce the gap of the energy price in Spain, especially for this energy intensive uh, industry. So, uh, and to promote the uh, the PPAs, the, the 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 private purchase agreement and uh, pa private partnership agreement in case of uh, commercialization of, of energy between energy companies are between uh, uh, with industry. So a, a new legal framework for the energy intensive industry totally approved by the by the Commission and also uh, stable from the legal point of view and from the budget uh, point of view for the next uh, for the next year. Third, change uh, of the of the financial lines, the traditional financial lines that we have to the, to, to finance the the the, the long term industrial investment, change the the, the loans the, the the loans call that we made every year, and turn this change this to a an investment fund. So an industrial investment fund always open with capacity of a bilateral negotiation between bilateral dealing between a company and the fund in order to promote long term industrial uh, industrial investment and uh, promoting not only loans but uh, also uh, other tools like equity or or instruments close to close to equity and finally the the, the bold reforms four and five of circular economy uh, in order to promote the new strategies in the city councils, so in the cities and the villages in Spain, but also in, uh, in businesses, in company, in business sector to promote this circular economy development. And finally, the investments. First, uh, the first one, Macro projects for the citization of, uh, of industry. First one, uh, we want to dedicate, well, I, I have not said that this, all these component 12, all the actions included in this component 12, will have a, a budget of 2.8 billion euros for the next three years. Uh, now, talking about investment, this first investment, this first investment, Macro projects for digitalization of industry. Uh, um, here, uh, four projects. Sorry, four projects: uh, health, agri-food, mobility, and tourism. Hundred million euros uh, uh, allocated in any of these macro projects for digitization of this uh, of this sector. Secondly. Uh, more, uh, around 540 uh, million euros for the sustaining uh, the programs for, uh, to foster the energy intensive industry in connection with the reform I, I talked about before. Third, sustainable of uh, industrial uh, sustainable industrial infrastructure. This is to very specific reindustrialization zones in Spain. Uh, in order to give them uh, connectivity in terms of uh, infrastructure. National Metrology Center Modernization, I will talk about it later because we are talking today about metrology. Flagship projects 
for industrial competitiveness and sustainability. As I said before, here we will uh, we will talk about a big uh, about whole value chain projects. So, in, the, in example, automotive sector, lithium batteries, EV platforms, and uh, components. All this transformation, uh, this flagship project uh, formed by big companies, SMEs, technological centers, etc., but taking into account all the value change, we will promote flagship projects similar to the IPCI, the European uh, projects, in this case, at the national level. So, and we will dedicate 1.5 uh, billion during the three during these three years. And finally, the, the, the finally the, the the activities for circular economy, uh, especially a circular economy in business, will have uh, around 40, uh, 84 million euros uh, for these three years. And I finish obviously talking about uh, metrology. So what do we want here? We want to improve the relationships between industry, academy, and science through spreading digitization of, uh, of metrology and facing new, uh, new, new disciplines, new challenges of, of society, such as uh, health metrology or quantic uh, metrology because uh, it's clear and I'm also uh, talking here about metrology is easy but metrology is essential this is an essential tool that underpins the industrial uh, competitiveness and supports the development of uh, of new products and, uh, and processes uh, for this reason in in this environment that we are talking about of uh, of industrial reco recovery where technological transformation and digital transformation is playing an essential role, metrology must uh, must accompany industries in their in their various developments. So, it is estimated technological and, and metrology developments for for the coming years will be aimed at promoting a sustainable low carbon economy and improving the health and the safety of, uh, of citizens. And also a special attention must be paid for to the foreseeable metrology needs in the horizontal technological fields of the areas included in the included in the in the Green Deal. Sustainability in industry, agriculture and mobility, clean energy, climate uh, climate action in accordance with the guidelines of the new uh, of the new European program uh, of metrology, where European metrology networks uh, take uh, take on a special relevance. Aware of this, the Spanish uh, Metrology Center, the highest technical body in the field of metrology in Spain, that I have the the, the, the honor to to share, has been developing and improving. Uh, its uh, measurement capabilities in the recent years, and it's currently initiating uh, a modernization plan to through the 2021-2023 uh, the strategic plan and the digital transformation program that includes uh, includes among other lines the the, the next ones. First, develop uh, as I said. Uh, develop scientific and industrial metrology in highly expansive uh, and strategic fields linked to the priority areas for Spain defined in the programs of the European Union. Second, uh, focus its, its activity on value-added services uh, in, uh, in strategic industries. So more relationship between metrology and all the development we are talking about and these flagship projects for Spanish uh, industry to be uh, third, to be identified as a reference center in the provision of specialized uh, metrology services. Fourth, uh, promote digitalization in metrology and offer 
new services regarding to digitalization and um, finally uh, increase efficiency in metrological control services and apply new technological developments for uh, for uh, the real realization so to materialize uh, these uh, these lines the, the the same budget for the allocated for the next three years in this case 60 million euros will allow to uh, to address different programs in uh, in the in the fields that were i talking about before so digital transformation uh, metrology for health clean energy and also uh, the development for metrology based on quantum frequency patterns for applications in smart manufacturing, health, or the fight uh, against climate change. So we believe uh, with this uh, with these policies and strategy, it's expected that the Spanish metrology, in collaboration with uh, other European countries, can accompany and support the fourth industrial revolution and strengthening the, the competitiveness of the European industrial uh, sector. We believe the transformation of a society require, requires an update uh, of, the, of the Spanish Metrology Center with a digitization plan that allows, on one hand, to simplify and standardize its processes in order to increase efficiency and transparency, and secondly, on the other hand, and on the other hand, to offer uh, new digital services demanded by society. And finally, the plan will make investment in all these uh, in all these three fields that uh, that I talk about: and so health, clean energies, and metrology of uh, of quantum in this case. So uh, these are the main question, the, the the main issues that I want to talk about in a very accelerated way. Always loving the metrology and always. Uh, uh, taking care of the metrology in in Spain and in Europe for us this is a for us this is a priority for us is very relevant to 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 foster and to recover uh, muscle to recover strength in the Spanish metrology center in order to be a reference in southern Europe and uh, and in connection with other European countries in connection with other areas like Latin America etc so thank you very much do not hesitate to ask any question now or in the future to me or to the team of the spanish metrology center and uh, thank you thank you so much okay thank you very much <coughs> Thank you very much for your presentation, Mr. Blanco. Dr. Gustav Bindroth will be presenting our next topic, Research and Development in Metrology, Companion of Solutions to Social Challenges and Support to the Industry. New EMN program, a current decision for the future. Dr. Gustav Bindroth is working in the European Commission, Directorate General for Research and Innovation in the Unit for Sustainable Industry Systems. Among other responsibilities, he is in charge of the metrology research programs. Prior to joining the Commission, he was working as a researcher and project leader in process engineering and control for integrated circuit manufacturing. He holds a PhD in physics from University College London, specializing in organic thin films and soft condensed matter physics, and a Master of Science in Applied Physics and Electrical Engineering from Linkopin Institute of Technology. In any case, please remember to send your questions to webinar at sem.es. Dr. Gustav Lindro, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much also for the uh, invitation. I will now try to share my uh, presentation. See if it works. I can, uh, I can see it. Hopefully you can also see it. Um, I um, th again thank you very much for the uh, invitation. I would like to continue on uh, what um, 
uh, what uh, the president of CEM said before about uh, the new type of focus that we have. And he also mentioned the uh, uh, research programs that we have had so far. We have had uh, large research uh, programs for metrology, both under the seventh framework program uh, with calls on until uh, 2013 and uh, also on the horizon 2020 uh, where we had calls already under uh, until uh, last year so even during the pandemic we uh, managed to uh, launch calls for projects um so i'm going to uh, 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 just go through these uh, a bit and also uh, present to you a proposal that the commission has put forward uh, on the 23rd so two days ago um, so it's a very good moment to have this webinar as well, because um, the Commission has just put forward this proposal. It still needs to go through the, uh, the Council and the European Parliament uh, for discussions, but that's, uh, let's say, it, it details uh, the, um, the considerations that we, ha we have on how we would like to bring a new metrology research program also for Horizon Europe, that is all, uh, our new framework program uh, between 21 and 27. Um, so uh, just to give you a bit of state of play where we are, um, the, um, um, uh, the previous initiative, so uh, we have had, we've had previously, we've also had metrology focused programs as well, but we have not had that in the scale as we've had the last 10 years. And that is really uh, bringing in um, the metrology institutes um, to be focused not only on, let's say, classical metrology disciplines such as time, mass, uh, electricity, and so on, but really focusing on grand challenges such as health, energy, environment that is also in of interest uh, to the externals and to society in large. Um, we also managed to engage the national resources. So for instance, the, the, the institutionalized resources that are available in Spain or in other countries where um, um, research is then available. And we bring that together and we make this collaborative uh, focus on our metrology research. I also want to highlight also for the ones who are listening here that it's really um, uh, open also these programs to external participants. If you're located in the European Union or in a country that is associated to our framework programs, then you will also be eligible to participate in these programs. And you participate in the same way as you participate in other programs. So we have managed to do that and that will also continue. Um, the partnership, the new partnership that we have a proposal since two days ago um, will um, focus more on European level capacity. So today we rely a lot on national capacities um, that uh, let's say uh, if you're in, located in Spain, uh, your main collaborator if it's uh, towards metrology as it's been presented as well um, is the Spanish Metrology Institute that will continue as such but we would like to uh, build new capacities for instance quantum was mentioned from the previous presentation um, that is something that we we need a critical mass that is much larger than uh, metrology institute itself so let's say bringing the whole of europe together to create uh, let's say really specialized services and cap metrology capacities that we did not have before and we were not able to do, to do that and that would really focus on let's say new challenges. Um, for instance, uh, we have, uh, I will come back to that later, but we have, uh, for instance, for the pandemic, we have wishes to have a certain European level capacity in terms of diagnostics and analysis. And that is also something that uh, will then trickle down to all our programming, in including the metrology partnership. Um, on that note, these networks, these type of structures that we would like to build in this new partnership will make this program the last dedicated program for metrology. So in the future, metrology will be there, but it will be for each uh, specialized uh, application. So let it be quantum metrology, for instance, will of course find its place in future programs and future research programs as well, but there will not be a dedicated, uh, dedicated uh, metrology program as such. Um, just on the context of what we have, the global challenges, uh, this is a list of different uh, sustainable development goals that are from uh, the United Nations 
and they have the different numbers. And these are really the goals uh, that we would like to reach in terms of the sustainable development. And these are examples on the role of metrology and expectations that uh, society and politicians have on metrology to deliver. For instance, uh, we have uh, sustainable cities. We have really uh, a lot of effort also towards climate action. Um, so um, to, to really be able to be proactive in our supply of metrology services and metrology capacities to, uh, to also, um, let's say, implement our new regulations, new policies towards uh, a new uh, effective climate action. Um, in the, uh, of course, in the uh, sense of the virus pandemic, uh, the uh, health and having, let's say, a good general health across the globe is also, of course, very impor important. And it was mentioned also in the previous presentation about uh, uh, health and how a metrology can also be bring in a large contribution there as well. So health is really a, a, an important lab laboratory analysis in general is a really a important part of, of this challenge of how we will get uh, respond to this pandemic, future pandemics, and also how we will recover from them. Um, just a bit of the overview of what we've had in uh, uh, the current uh, program. So these are the, uh, this MPIR, this is the European Metrology Program for Innovation and Research. This is the program that we had uh, under Horizon 2020. There we had uh, different thematic programs. These thematic programs will continue. They will probably be a bit uh, re, um, revamped or renamed, but the, the principle of it will still be there. It will focus on uh, areas such as health, such as climate, such as a basic research or fundamental research into, for instance, quantum technology and these type of things. And just to give you a bit of, um, bit of an example of the projects that we've had was, for instance, uh, we have had this um, uh, uh, redefinition of the basic units, so the SI units, so the kilogram mass, um, time, second, and so on. Um, we have had uh, this redefinition in 2019 that was uh, adopted, and we have had several of these uh, projects that contributed to this uh, type of redefinition. Uh, One of that was a project for the um, for the single electron or the, the quantum realization of uh, the definition of the um, SI unit for uh, for ampere. ampere. Um, we have had energy type of uh, projects looking at uh, how to properly measure charging, uh, charging technologies for electrical vehicles, uh, for instance, through induction. And that is something that is then a new capability. We would expect that through this project, new metrology capacities will come out. Um, the atomic clocks, for instance, uh, new uh, high resolution time uh, timing clocks uh, for uh, for different type of navigation, perhaps, or for uh, for other type of fast or automa automated systems. These type of reference clocks will be very important. Um, the, uh, for instance, for in manufacturing, really industrially focused uh, projects there, we've had also a large participation of external industrial stakeholders that can take up these, uh, these technologies also directly through, through the project. They might be instrument uh, builders, they might be, um, let's say, manufacturing uh, participants themselves, but then they get a much closer link to uh, the metrology system, a close link to the National Metrology Institute as well, in order to be able to, uh, to fastly improve their quality, quickly improve their quality, and quickly being able to ensure this traceability in the measurements that they do. So for instance, one, pro uh, one example of project here is a large volume uh, metrology for, uh, for manufacturing applications. Um, lastly, I want to uh, also mention what we are going to push even further in the new uh, program is the uh, support towards standardization and regulation. Um, just an uh, example of a project that we've had was a normative project towards standardization of flow metering for different types of gases. Um, that is a project that uh, has, is still running, in fact, but uh, it is um, supporting 
uh, a directive on the EU level for everything that is measuring instruments. So that's one of our most important uh, directives for metrology, which defines uh, then how we measure, um, how we use measuring instruments and how they are going to, let's say, how you qualify your measurements. So that is what one project, and this will also uh, continue in the future. We will also expand the, uh, the uh, directives that we would like to have supported. So, as I said, um, uh, our commissioner, uh, Commissioner Gabriel, she presented uh, she presented this um, uh, proposal uh, to uh, all the commissioners, and they took the decision on Tuesday, so two days ago, um, on uh, presenting this proposal to the Council and to the Parliament. So they, uh, the, it's the Council and the European Parliament that will need to. Uh, uh, act on this uh, proposal and then uh, hopefully then take that decision. In our proposal, it includes 300 million euros uh, from the union side, and we've already had indications from our participating states. So at the moment, uh, we have uh, we have let's say asked our EU members to how much would you be able to put in also into this partnership so we get this uh, let's say a co-funded model under um, uh, under this instrument that we're looking for so there we have already from our eu uh, members and uh, eea members we've already uh, been able to to have indicative commitments of more than 360 million uh, on top of that we hope uh, in the future that we can also close uh, association uh, with um, other countries around uh, around Europe uh, to also to join into Horizon Europe and also to join into our metrology partnership and that we have had before and we have the expectation that will happen again. Um, so um, what will happen is we will launch calls for proposals. Uh, depending on the timing here, we we still hope to be able to launch our first proposal uh, calls for proposals in this year. Um, let's see how that goes and how, how long this uh, decision process takes. In any case, we will have uh, um, yearly uh, calls for proposals until 2027 included. So that means that you can, you can participate in this program until 2027. If uh, you can still submit proposals in 2027, that means that you will probably start a project in 2028 and then run that pro uh, project perhaps uh, three years after that as well, so until 2030. So that's more or less the span of this program. It will last between 2021 to 2030. Um, in that uh, time frame, we will also uh, build up these European metrology networks. Here, a lot of responsibility lies with the metrology institutes to be able to uh, bring, uh, let's say, their expertise in, their strategy on what they think is most important. I will go through a bit um, uh, the uh, European metrology networks that exist today that are, let's say, in the, their pilot phase and will need them to be built up during this program. We also expect that um, the metrology partnership will be even set even closer to other um, European partnerships that we have that are, for instance, uh, for uh, aviation industry, for uh, other types of transport industry. It could be for hydrogen. It could be uh, for, uh, uh, let's say, batteries. So we have other partnerships for manufacturing or, um, re uh, let's say, energy intensive industries that was also mentioned in the previous presentation. And again, this will be the last uh, dedicated program on metrology under this, under this type of setup. And then we hope that these networks will be able to take it on after 2030. Um, so um, just on the activities, we have uh, one side on building up these European metrology uh, networks, then we will fund research projects either inside these networks or outside, uh, depending on, on the focus that we would like to give. Um, we will also have support actions to increase the impact, perhaps they could be uh, to increase the uptake in industry to, uh, for research results that already exist. It will follow the same type of rules that we'll have for uh, other calls in Horizon Europe. So as a participant, especially if you're um, 
outside of a metrology institute, you will not have much difference in terms of participating or reporting as in, uh, you would have in other type of uh, Horizon Europe programs that we have. So that is really in terms of also the funding, the funding model will be the same and hopefully in a much more simplified if you were also used to previous type of uh, projects that we had. Um, just in, uh, in terms of the numbers here on the partners, as I said, we have participating states, more or less uh, 22, 23 EU, EEA uh, states, plus potentially then uh, future associated states, somewhere perhaps five to six, and that would be uh, a bit more uh, than what we had in Empire, but still in line with that interest. Um, very quickly on the European metrology networks, uh, that's uh, what is defined on uh, um, European level through the association, the European Association of Metrology Institutes called Euromet. So Euromet, the Euromet members, which are uh, your metrology institutes, they will come up with a strategy on which uh, networks are most feasible to implement on a European level. So we have had pilots on how to bring these together. They are still, um, let's say, in the build-up phase. And um, the, uh, um, they will require to be able to build up also strategy in terms of research in order to be able also to submit proposals um, into the calls. Um, but still, they are very interesting also in, uh, on a European level. For instance, we have climate and oceans ob observation that will go very very in line with our climate priorities on, on European level. Uh, I've already mentioned energy gases and their links to the our directives. Uh, so we, uh, there is a dedicated network only on these type of energy gases. Quantum technologies have been mentioned uh, before and I'm pleased to see also that uh, the uh, CEM, so in Spain, are interested in engaging in the quantum tech. Um, and uh, finally, I also want to mention the laboratory medicine network that has just because of the pandemic been uh, much more on topic today and uh, that is also something that will continue uh, this uh, of course uh, the the plans were already there before the pandemic but again um, we need to adapt also to the current state um, just uh, what is a network then you have the core uh, metrology disciplines you have a community around that network as well that also can bring in and uh, bring in input and take take their output and use that also for their own uh, for their own developments and innovation uh, the network also needs to provide services uh, uh, do research um, to different types of amounts depending on on the research intensive uh, um, priorities that they have and also bring in support in uh, both into our policy drive so let's say we want to understand how we uh, regulate um, quantum technologies in the future then uh, we also rely on the quantum technologies network to also bring input into that and, and the, especially the aspects of of measurements so um with that, you have um, more information. There is uh, the website for the Metrology Association on European level. Uh, so Euromet has a website. There you can find the current projects that are running or have been closed. There's a lot of information. Each project has also uh, their own website where you can get even more information. There is also um, a lot of future events. Um, with the pandemic, of course, um, they will most likely be virtual. But that's also a good opportunity to also participate in these type of events that are open to the public and to be able to uh, to bring in also your views, also to follow up on, let's say, the developments of these European metrology networks as well. If you're interested in our commission proposal and to get more um, uh, information on or details on how that is uh, being set up, uh, the proposal is published uh, with supporting documents around that as well. And that is also a very good um, place to get uh, access if you if you're more interested in in how the um, the uh, the partnership would be set up. So with that, thank you very much, and um, I'm open for any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much for your presentation, Dr. Vinras. Next, Dr. Naimu Tilva from Technica will be talking about digitalization of industry in the field of Industry 4.0.
Unai Mutilva received his Bachelor of Science and his Master of Science degrees in Mechanical Engineering from the University of Mondragon, Spain, and the Brighton University in the UK, respectively. He received his PhD degree in Industrial Metrology from the University of Zaragoza in Spain through a PhD thesis entitled Traceable Onboard Metrology for Machine Tools and Large Scale System. He is currently a principal researcher at Technical Research Institution and he's also in charge of the measuring and inspection technology solution at this research center. His research interests include precision engineering and industrial metrology, mainly focused on the improvement of products and manufacturing processes for the aerospace, energy, and machine tool sectors. Additionally, leading and participating in local and European research programs involving metrology and industry 4.0 topics. Please remember that if you have any queries, you can send it. To, you can send your questions to webinar at sem.es. At the moment, we have more than 150 attendants, mostly from Europe and the Americas. Dr. Unai, you have, you have the floor. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you very much for, for the introduction. I will try to share my screen and I will go through my presentation. I guess that you can see my screen, right? So um, thank you very much for the introduction. And today I will try to let you know what we are doing here in a research company called Techniker uh, within the metrology on the current scenario, right? Um, this is a little bit what I'm talking about. Uh, Raul and Gustav already did a perfect introduction to the to the topic, so I guess that I will go straight forward to the to the next three points: the role of metrology, metrology for you will see manufacturing system, manufacturing products, and manufacturing processes, and I will conclude my presentation. So we have already seen, uh, and Gustav have already has already talked about the sustainable development goals that. Uh, yeah, Raul has already talked about the importance of industry, not just in Europe, but also in Spain. And this is where I will try to, to let you know about which is the role of metrology within the current industrial scenario. And yeah, the role of metrology. I will focus my presentation here, yeah? Right now, um, yeah, the factory of the, of the future is already going on, uh, yeah. It defines an interconnected production environment uh, with an autonomous flows of information and decision making constitute the digital transformation of it. Yeah. So here, the measurement and the metrology plays an essential role. Why? Because it allows us to capture what's going on, right? Um, so it means that nowadays we are conceiving around a data driving manufacturing where there is a virtual war and this is a real war, yeah? So here in the right corner, we can see that when we focus on a manufacturing process, we can talk about the part, I mean, the manufacturing product we are producing, the process itself and the manufacturing system, yeah? All of them are already including a lot of sensors. So it means that we are creating a lot of data, yeah? This data goes straight forward to a digital war, right? Uh, so we are already developing um, digital models for parts, processes, and machines, and we are running the virtual and the real world in parallel. Yeah. So I will focus, so I will divide my presentation into, I will talk about the manufacturing system, about the manufacturing process and the manufactured products, right? So in order to do that, yeah, uh, I will not talk about a digit the digital metro infrastructure in detail, but I would like to highlight that we need it in order to go on, yeah? So Gustav has already talked about the digital metrology network uh, that we are building in Europe into the next uh, European research framework. And I would like to say that um, you will see some developments that we are working 
uh, in Techniker, but uh, there are some points that I would like to highlight. Yeah, um, I would like to talk about the digital calibration certificate. We are running and we are developing very specific uh, calibration and measurement procedures where uh, we try to be automatic. So we are looking for digital calibration certificates in order to uh, automate the whole process yeah, from the metrology point of view. Uh, we also need uh, support and streamline regulatory processes by joining existing infrastructures and databases from the point of uh, metrology. And I would like to say that um, I have been working for Techniker 10 years, yeah? And I have seen how the metrology is going from the laboratory to the process, to the manufacturing process, yeah? So which is, which is our aim? I mean, I work for a research company. In my case, I work uh, within the metrology department, with the precision engineering department. But here uh, in Spain, the past country, we have a very strong industry, yeah? And a very, our strength is the production, yeah? So we are aiming, we are aiming uh, an overall equipment effectiveness where we aim 100% of quality. I mean, we are trying to produce only good parts, 100% of performance as fast as possible, and 100% of availability, no stop time. Yeah. So in this scenario, we can define the, the metrology for manufacturing roadmap, which is called the manufacturing metrology. So here in the left side, you can see what's going on. Raul already Spain explained what's going on yeah the mega trends and the boundary conditions and what we need from metrology in order to assess the digitalization of of the industry yeah so which are the trends of production nowadays we have resource efficiency yeah new processes and technology flexibility and transparency and in order to do that we need metrology to to be fast to be accurate, reliable, flexible, and holistic, yeah? And you will see some examples about what's going on and what we are trying to do from Technica in order to achieve that, right? So, um, as I have said before, I have split my presentation into manufacturing systems, manufacturing processes, and manufacturing products. When we talk about manufacturing systems, we can imagine something like we can, what we can see here in the screen. Um, our aim is to maintain the accuracy of the manufacturing system very high during its life cycle, yeah? But, okay, when we use these manufacturing systems, our accuracy goes down and sometimes we need to run a calibration i mean we need to map the error and try to compensate it in order to yeah improve the accuracy so what we are doing at this point um you can see here for example we have developed a machine tool assembly process with a laser tracker team now this manufacturer was using for example a, a lot of measurement devices right and now we have developed a new manufacturing or assembly process where they use a laser tracker in order to mount their big machine tool from the very beginning till uh, the user, yeah? So what's more? We are developing very fast error mapping processes, yeah? Integrated into the machine tool. And here you can see that uh, we introduce a metrology or dimensional standard, yeah? A 2D dimensional standard and a calibration is performed automatically, yeah? What's more, we are trying to develop volumetric error mapping processes from the very beginning here in the past country, we are surrounded by big machine tool builders, yeah? Like Danobat, Sayer, Solaluce, uh, Nicolas Correa in Burgos and so on. So they are very interested in uh, developing a fast, measurement process in order to know which is the volumetric error of their machines yeah so from the very beginning uh, in 2010 something like this we develop a multilateration um, process 
where we use a unique instrument in order to map the error. You can see, I will try to put, um, yeah, I will show you later, perfect. Uh, next, okay, they told us, uh, you need a day in order to map the, the volumetric error of our machines. Could you try to improve your measurement process in order to go faster? And we introduce four measurement devices in order to reduce from six hours to one hour. And finally, I will show you later, you will see what we are doing right now. So this is the first one, yeah? You can see here that using a unique measurement system, we are mapping the volumetric error of the machine tool. This way, they can know and they can understand how the machine tool is behaving, yeah? It is needed in order to manufacture high value uh, parts like parts for the aerospace, car industry, and so on. After that, they told us, okay, you need to improve your measurement process. And this is what we did, yeah? Um, we introduced four measurement devices surrounding the machine tool, and we achieved to perform the volumetric error mapping of the machine tool with a unique point cloud, yeah? So uh, it's very beautiful, but it needs four measurement devices working at the same time. At yeah, it's quite expensive nowadays. So what we have done is to develop a new measurement process where we integrate measurement device into the, the machine tool, the spindle, we define four fiducial points and we run the measurement process automatically just when with one measurement device. You can see here what we try to define from the very beginning, yeah. This is just a CAT model, an animated CAT model, yeah. It was part of my PhD. And what we have done is to integrate an available laser tracker in Techniker. You can see uh, how it looked like, yeah? A laser tracker into the manufacturing spindle for fiducial points. And this is what we have achieved to do, yeah? It is called the Integrated Multilateration System for Machine Tools. And what we have done is to integrate laser tracker for fiducial points, and we have become the measurement process. Everything is automatic, yeah? It takes around 30 minutes in order to know how the machine tool geometry is. At this point, as I have said before, it it uh, it is important to uh, have solutions like the digital calibration certificate if we want to become everything automatically, yeah? Imagine that we have this machine tool in our premises, we can run this kind of calibrations at the morning or before uh, an important part is manufactured, but the results need to, yeah, become traceable with, with this European metrology and national metrology framework in order to yeah, assess the quality of the data and the traceability of the of the performed measurements. And after that, you can see here how a large machine tool compensation exercise looks like. Yeah, it is without compensation and it is after compensation. So it makes sense to try to integrate and develop this kind of auto calibration measurement procedures. Yeah, similarly, we are trying to. Um, work on robots, yeah? Um, till now, we have employed robots in order to perform repetitive uh, tasks like assembly and so on. But nowadays we are aiming to have repetitive and absolute accuracy robots, yeah? So what we are trying to do is um, to model these robots. We are using a kinematic calibration like the Navit Hartenberg parameters. We are also trying to model non-kinematic parameters like center of gravity, mass, inertia, and so on. So uh, with a very complete model, we can try to run again a calibration, yeah? You can see here also how we are trying to integrate in robots measurement devices in order to run these auto calibration um, exercises automatically, but we are just nowadays trying to understand understand how to calibrate a robot, yeah? You can see here what we have done just two weeks ago. 
we are employing a laser tracker outside of surrounding the robot. We integrate some reflectors and you can see how we move the robot in order to run the calibration and try to solve the Denabit Heitenberg parameters, right? This way, we can run a complete robot calibration. And the idea in the next months, the next one, two years, is to try to run this calibration yeah, and with an integrated approach. So as we have seen uh, for the machine tools, in this case also we can try to become the whole process automatic. Yeah, We integrate a measurement device, we define some fiducial points and we run the, the calibration process. And once that we achieve the data, we need a digital framework in order to send our information and receive back that uh, we are okay, yeah? Um, and this way we can uh, push this digitalization of, of the industry based on, on metrology, yeah? So um, you can see here that we employ a Denabit Hattenberg model where we have different parameters and we are also considering um, uh, the lack of stiffness, yeah? Because this kind of, of mechatronics suffer from that. So you can see what we are achieving is Nowadays, when we attend to a to a yeah manufacturing shop floor where there are robots, normally these robots are they they have a very high repeatability, around 20, 30 microns, but the absolute accuracy is normally worse than one millimeter. Yeah. So after the calibration, we can uh, achieve an absolute accuracy about 0.1 millimeter. So this is what we are trying to do. Yeah. We are uh, developing new measurement um, calibration uh, procedures, but we are also trying to improve the uncertainty related to these manufacturing systems. Yeah, You can see that for the machine tool, we are around 20 microns, absolute accuracy for a very big machine tool in the volume. And here we are trying to push the, the, the robot uh, accuracy around 0.1 millimeter. Now we are researching about how to to go further and 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 improve this 0.1 millimeters in general, right? Uh, manufacturing processes. Uh, we are talking about zero defect manufacturing. Yeah, here in our area, I have already talked that we have uh, large machine tool builders. Um, we have um, production companies that for aerospace, aeolic, car industry where they try to manufacture very big parts, yeah? So they need to manufacture these parts right with the first product, yeah? So um, we are trying to use metrology in order to do that, yeah? We are using metrology within or towards the zero defect manufacturing scenario. But the real life for us is like this. I mean, um, this is me, this is Unai. Sometimes we go to a... a Aeolic parts manufacturing company, machine tool builders, a very specific or singular project like telescopes. And you need to go there and try to use metrology in order to manufacture, to help them to manufacture better their products, right? And sometimes we have to perform this kind of, of uh, measurements where uh, we need to put the metrology instrument close to the manufacturing system and try to give a feedback to the manufacturing process in order to manufacture uh, perfectly, yeah? And try to, to reduce the scrap in order to make the most of, of resources, yeah? So I would say that uh, this manufacturing company this need a fast and accurate metrological feedback into their manufacturing processes, yeah? You can see more samples with uh, measurement instruments like um, laser tracker, um, scanning systems, and so on. Yeah. So this is what is going on nowadays, but we are trying to change that. Yeah. We are trying to introduce all the metrology, all the metrology framework in order to improve this manufacturing process and become the manufacturing process digital and automated, yeah? So we are introducing a lot of sensors, not just metrology devices like this, also sensors within products, manufacturing systems and processes. And we have a lot of information that we need to validate and to certificate 
against these metrology frameworks. And yeah, we need to develop a virtual metrology concept for these manufacturing systems and processes. Yeah, so we can give a feedback to the manufacturing process and try to define a zero defect manufacturing process. So nowadays we are trying to research within or towards this kind of of solutions. Eh? We are trying to perform a traceable coordinate measurement within machine tools. You can see here that we are using uh, touch props within uh, manufacturing systems, not just uh, the large scale, but also the medium scale. Uh, we are using technologies like laser trackers with the Mac and so on in order to have a metrology framework out of the machine tool in order to make those measurements traceable and try to give a direct feedback to the manufacturing process. Here you can see small component. Here you can see a big pump component. Yeah. So at here, what we are doing is this machine tool manufactures these components and we have this metrology instrument in order to measure the component and try to say to the to the manufacturing process, okay, uh, the process is good or not. You need to cut or you need to to go on and improve the, the part. Yeah. So here we have a little bit in order to let you. Yeah. We have a metrology accessory which is called TMAC combined with a laser tracker in order to make this measurement traceable. Yeah. So in this case, this touch prof triggers the measurement and the measurements are performed with the external metrology instrument. So this way we know that uh, the information is, is good and is traceable to the SI definition. Yeah. In the future, uh, we would like to make this process automatic, have a metrology framework in order to send the info and try to make everything traceable. Yeah. And not just on the medium and large scale, we are also trying to measure, yeah, on the micro nano scale, we are trying to measure surfaces, not just the dimension, but also the form in process within the machine tools, right? Um, we are also trying to develop new um, calibration uh, strategies in order to uh, calibrate systems that we employ in order to to assess the quality of the products. We have developed a brand new uh, CMM calibration process with laser technology so we can perform everything automatically again. Um, and finally, I will finish talking a little bit about product. Yeah, how the metrology can improve the product life cycle, life cycle management. Um, yeah, we would like to ensure the quality during the product life cycle. Uh, we are researching about concept like MBD, the model based definition, where we have or we are trying to achieve a kit, I mean, a nominal uh, definition of the product where we don't just have the dimension, but all the GD and T information. So we can employ this information within the quality information framework scenario in order to. Um, plan our measurements. I mean, uh, if we have a nominal cut with all this information and we have the virtual models of the, our measurement instruments, we can define um, virtually how to run and how to plan our measurement processes. We can um, become automatic the process uh, of the measurement. I mean, once that we achieve all the data, we can compare with the nominal data and all the post-processing of the measurement processes become automatic. So um, this is something we are researching on. Uh, it's not easy to introduce this technology from a research company to the industry because when we talk with an aerospace or car supplier, they are always trying to, to, to do what the main manufacturer, I mean, Airbus, Boeing, uh, Seat, Audi says. So yeah, we are trying to help them. We see that is something that is coming, MBD, Quiv, and so on. And we are trying to get ready to, to transfer all this information to, to the industry. Yeah. And just to finish, 
um, I guess that we are on time. Uh, I would like to remark that here from Techniker as a research company, we are trying to, as you see, develop new technology related to metrology, precision engineering, new information and transfer it to the to the industry just to improve our national, our local uh, industry and, and try to go ahead. Yeah. And as a good metrologist, I would like to say that metrology is and everything, but without metrology, nothing is anything. Thank you very much for attending this presentation and Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Montilva.